All right, hello, hello again. Here is build number 69. My, 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 is that a special number? Well, let's see if we like number 2024-69. This is going to be a quick install. Of course, you should read this. After all, we spent some time there someday, long ago. Uh, let's go. This one is going to be installed on top of an existing installation. Should work just fine. And create a shortcut. There you go. Install. All right, so this will install the, as of today, what's today, August 5, 2023, the latest version of the 2024 Howler build, number 69. And we also call that version 17, right, if you followed it over the many years. God, when was it, 21, 22 years ago that I got somehow the attention or interested in it and I found well that's an interesting paint program with brushes and lots of other things it doesn't do everything that we have become uh, lazily accustomed to but there are certainly lots of things it does that um, well make it fun so here is a launch of the newest version it's important after installation to launch it at least once right from here because that will associate dependencies, plugins, libraries, excuse me, not plugins, but libraries, there will be dependencies associated with it. Otherwise, it will not run. You need to run it once as administrator. It gets elevated to administrator level just once. At that point, you can stop it and then launch it from the desktop icon or menus or whatever you find more convenient. All right, the newest feature that I want to test quick here is an update on the rendering the 3d models uh, render geometry that is that's a uh, wavefront obj and in this case we have something new uh let's see we have uh, sphere maps Ooh, we haven't seen that yet nice we're gonna have environmental reflection mapping perhaps some spheres uh, not exactly sure we'll explore that there are two rendering modes we used to have a few more but we are doing away with the stuff that doesn't really need to be there anymore uh, so we have wireframe mode and we have render mode and we need an object so let's go oh, let's see other options here yeah one thing that you have recently added was a 4x4 for the for the anti-aliasing right at the final render but also in the preview if you're on a system that's fast enough let's go do that later oh there's a tone mapping nice that's a slider you can just grab it and go sideways um let's see oh yeah uh, gamma correction double-sided that's a new feature yay let's go check that that's the one i'm particularly interested in that's basically uh disabling uh back face calling right so so when it's uh, single-sided you have a closed object a volume if you look at it one side it may appear nice if you go to the inside you may see holes like the shark you might be on the inside of it and you see some uh, polygons missing it's also something you might see on uh, the sails of a ship if there is no thickness to it so let's go back and load ourselves a model let's see first we'll go Boom, 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 boom. Let's see. Doo, 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 doo. I think I have them here somewhere on data. And uh, OBJ. Let's see what might be the model where we have particularly an interest in that back face. Well, let's go to the shark. Uh, where's my sharks? Uh, it's good demo, subdirectory, black tip shark. There you go. All right, so if we go here, black tip, let's load this one here. And <clears throat> as soon as it's loaded, we see it's already rendered quite nicely. We can see it in the preview, but now it's fast enough. We can actually see it in the full view too. And there are a number of things we can do now. With the thumb wheel, we can zoom in. You can see down here, it's a zoom that's changing. So that's the aperture of the camera. It's not moving us closer to the shark. We're still at a safe distance, don't you worry. <laughs> what you want to do though, is you want if you want to go into the inside of that, you need to move in. So let's go to the move mode here. And there, with the left button dragging down, you're moving closer, the camera is moving in. And so now, ooh, now we see the inside. All right, let's right button, let's you see, move up and down. Okay, so we see the inside. And again, if we go to the gear with the settings, that's the double-sided mode. If you disable that, it's gone. It's of course faster that way, but with the double-sided, it's perfect. You can see the inside too. 
and not miss out on those polygons. That is also really interesting if you go into the wireframe mode. While you're in wireframe mode, it might be a little bit clearer if you are, for example, let's see if you can rotate this dude a little bit, something like this, and you're going to the shaded render or OpenGL wireframe, you see the polygons, the wireframe is showing mostly from the front side. You don't see it on the back side, and that's good in this case, right? In some cases, you will want to see both the front and the back, but if you disabled the back face calling, or rather, yeah, disable it, meaning you don't want to have it double-sided. Now, as you rotate, you can see it's much more data because the polygons in the back are also showing. The edges, the triangles are all showing from the front and the back side. So that might make it slower for the rendering, uh, especially in shaded mode, uh, but it may not be slow enough to have you not do that. Uh, and most importantly, it may be just what you need to do if you want to see the inside of this uh, of this shark or anything that uh, has a volume that's closed and you happen to move into it. Right? So if you move into it now, you can still see uh, the mouth, um, you know, the guts, <laughs> the poo poo place. Everything here is visible, uh, and, and that's going to be important if you do some architectural. Uh, and you have some furniture inside and you want to see the walls in the back of the house still stay there. They may not have a thickness to it. They may just be a single polygon and they would disappear if you see them from the inside when normally you see them from the outside or vice versa, right? It could be the other way around. So anyway, that's a nice new feature. We'll take another look at um, other new features here, the sphere maps. Let's see actually right here what we have if we choose it. Oh yeah, it's it's a different map, a different lighting effect here. Uh, so we have, seems like Dan has included something here. We'll need to explore where they are. Probably in a subdirectory that we can actually see what are they. Maybe they are JPEG images or PNGs, or maybe even some higher, higher order images, full dynamic range, we'll see. Anyway, this is where it's heading. And uh, if you want to do underwater scenery, that's definitely one of the great things you can expect to do with this. You know, something like this view and move in a little bit, rotate a little bit more like this, and then rotate the light source. Maybe you want to give it more light from the top, less from the bottom. So get one of them, get rid of one of them. Let's say we have the, the light here is whitish. And then this one here will reduce to black. So we basically have only lights from one side and then we, we can rotate it to appear from the top. Maybe a little bit brighter, something like this. There you go. And then also increase the intensity of it altogether. There's also ambient light. So if you want to make it look like it's underwater, give it a little bit of a turquoise uh, appearance on the, on the ambient. There you go. Uh, or if it's hovering over the beach, over the sand, and it's a yellowish sand, you will probably want to give it the belly uh, area to, to be illuminated with some ambient uh, sandy color, and something like this. And there you go. So here we go. We have a couple of new features, and we will explore. Of course, we are doing much more on the physics-based rendering. PBR is uh, the name of the game, and we are adding also the anti-aliasing. Here you see a little bit of staircases, so if you go to full anti-aliasing, uh, 4x4, even better. There you go. So <clears throat> now if you zoom in, it's a little bit less, and then as you rest, it's uh, better quality. See, for example, here, yeah, you can see there's another render, and Check, check this area here. And of course, depending on how many polygons are competing for visibility here, you might still see a little bit of staircasing. But um, no problemo, we can have this. Let's say we take this scene uh, into the brush. Let's make it a brush because, or actually perhaps uh, really more like uh, all the way out, to zoom out a little bit. So we have the entire shark in view. Something like this. We don't want to to be, there you go. We don't want to cut off because we don't know yet exactly how we're going to position it. Make sure it's not cut off. And then uh, capture that to the brush <clears throat> or, or make it a new brush and okay that. All right, so now we have a brush, uh, just one frame, I think. Yep, there it is. 
And so we can take this brush, go to the paint tool, enable the preview of the brush, and there it is, change the size. There it was, and now we can do, of course, all sorts of other things with it. It's a brush after all, we can paint it and have a whole family of sharks there. Uh, we can stamp it down on uh, other background imagers, and uh, let's just do one here. Let's go filter, render, maybe something caustic, some whirly noise or some underwater. I think there are some that, that looks really good, if I only remembered where they are. Maybe it's animated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, animated water caustics. Now, that one might require an image or an animation. Let's go rent, test render. Uh, that's on the ground. Yeah, why not? Uh, let's go default chromatic. Okay, and a little bit smaller. Let's say we want mesh size, uh, wave size. Let's make it 22. Test render. So smaller wavelets, there you go. And uh, the coloring might need to be a little bit more on the bluish side. Test render that. There you go. Okay, okay that. And so we want that shark to appear hovering over a floor that's like this. Uh, perhaps a little bit less, let's say, expand dynamic. So we have, oh, actually even more. Let's adjust the uh, brightness, the value. Yeah, let's use this to reduce the brightness, increase the value a little bit and the contrast. Uh, gamma, something like this. Right, we might want to make it blurry too, but before that, let's make it uh, seamless. So let's make seamless and a nice overlap here. Let's make it 16 by 16, both. Easier to remember. And then perspective transform perspective. Right, so now we have uh, not, uh, there you go. Move it like this and and we can, of course, move it in a couple of ways. And then, so now it's starting to line up like this. And, of course, we might want to add a gradient here, uh, multiply mode for the linear gradient. So linear gradient tool, yep, black to white in a multiply mode. So black all the way at the end here, and then drag it down so we have it disappear into the distance. There you go. And so now, if we show our Sharky, it's there. And uh, maybe we can make it a little bit smaller, so it's looking a little bit less impressive. Uh, let's say we want to add a little bit of bumpiness to that, some paper texture. I think we could do that here, but we can probably also find a couple of other places. Uh, anyway, we'll let, we'll let you explore that later. I just wanted to get started on that 3D import with OBJ files and this of course you've seen many others with uh, NASA models or 3D printer ready models uh, and we'll explore more of that. Let's for now just like blur it a little bit and ma maybe add a little bit of uh, distortion. So let's first do a little bit of a Gaussian blur because we want to be focused on our shark. There's some blue stuff here I don't like so I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to simply turn it into a grayscale uh, something like that, and then adjust with the blur a little bit more. Box filter, not that much. There you go, and then adjust the contrast, and that's too much. Reset, there you go, gamma, and value there. Okay, so now we can give it a little bit more of a turquoise color, uh, adjust color. And this one is a additive where we'll reduce, we'll remove the red and a little bit green so we have more of a uh, cyan color. And there you go. Okay, maybe this one needs to be a little bit more bluish too. So on the brush, we can do some, uh, on the stored brush, which we already have here, we can reduce RGB hue saturation value. We could change the hue right there. Uh, give it a little bit of a different uh, saturation also, a hue saturation, a little bit more saturation, a little bit less. And then certainly RGB, reduce the red, and it will be much more bluish in appearance. There you go. And stomp it down. There's a little stomp mode. You need to get the keyboard focus or the 
pointer focus first and then we do one click and there it is and maybe you have another one further further away down there and maybe that one's swimming the other direction you have a, a x4 horizontal flip there you go and uh, maybe not quite that far but that small something like that and also less saturation since it's farther away and a little bit darker so we do hue saturation value the value will be a little bit darker saturation reduced hue about the same and there you go <laughs> and uh, again we need to do the x for horizontal flip let's click to get the keyboard focused there you go voila mission accomplished thanks for watching we'll get more See you.